Welcome to Pro Audio Profiles. I'm Brennan Decora, and on this show, we focus on techniques for inspired studio performances. Each week, I host experts from across the industry. Let's get started. Today, we have Ofek Oyov. He's an engineer that's worked with Aviv Geffen, Ninet Tayeb, Hanan Ben Ari, Alon Eder, Roni Caspi, and many more. Enjoy. So, first off, I really want to thank you for being here. Um, I like to start by going over the, your backstory, if you don't mind. Kind of how, how you got into engineering, what led you to where you are, that kind of thing. Of course, I would love to. Awesome. I have to say I'm very excited about this one because that's my first interview in English. So okay, like <laughs> if I if I get stuck in sentences, feel free to finish my sandwiches. <laughs> no problem. No problem. For me, it's all. very exciting. Awesome. Um, so I'm ha- very happy to be here and thank you to invite me here. Cool. Um, so it like like every other story of like a classic engineer story I started as a drum drummer okay <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of drummers yeah. that become engineers yeah I feel like th- it's always like that because every rehearsal that you have with your bands at your house so all the right. amps in your house yeah. so you tweaking tweaking the That's amps true. and you use like to carry <laughs> on and I your, never thought of that wow that's the for me that was yeah, the reason that makes sense because every band that I had I had all the equipment right because you don't want to lug the drums over every time yeah, yeah. and my parents were, were cool so right. maybe like the parents of the engineer usually be cool <laughs> right right S- yeah so That's it's like awesome. I started as a drummer like when I was eight mm-hmm. my father showed me the DVD of Led Zeppelin and when okay. I saw like Moby Dick the drum solo right like, a week after I started to play drums nice. and that was my dream to be a rock star to play drums okay. to do tours Mm-hmm. everything and so when I was 16 I had like a band in high school mm-hmm. and we like toured all around Israel and we do, did like a big festival and, and we decided to record an album at my house okay like, by ourselves mm-hmm. very indie like right we stole some microphone from school <laughs> we <laughs> like, right. we organized the room my father Like he helped us to drill a hole like from my like the music st- like the studio oh, right, right. to my uh, bedroom right <laughs> and I'm, ju- I'm just thinking about it right now because we wanted to record it live mm-hmm. so the amp will be in my room right and like hmm. amp it's taking a small space but I switched the bed and like right. I put a lot of like foam on on the mm-hmm. wall just like for fucking amp right right and <laughs> so I I slept like in the studio I didn't slept in my okay. room <laughs> okay that's fun. like I I canceled nice. my room for yeah. a month right. just to record amp nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like this whole month for me was like a new thing I discovered mm-hmm. like they did the engineering they did everything right and for me that was so amazing to see how we can record music and how you think about the sound how you think about mm-hmm. parts so I f- really fell in love with studio stuff right. right and and were they showing you some of the engineering stuff at that time or not, not really, really. Yeah. I, 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 I I didn't think about that like okay. I I just enjoy the the like the the like me as a drummer thinking about right. how the record I, okay. i i was there as a musician right i really enjoyed the studio stuff i didn't think about the engineering mm-hmm. stuff okay and like for me at that time it was just yeah we're just recording stuff like mm-hmm. it's a an, it's a extension for a musician like if you want to be a musician they right. say you need to know how to use we use q based mm-hmm. five yeah yeah so I didn't think about uh like what is engineer, but right. I really enjoyed the studio time okay. and we did the the album and I really fell in love nice. with all the this project and when I was eighteen, I decided to buy my own equipment mm-hmm. and I remember like the first time i 
connect my like focus drive 1820 right. whatever mm -hmm. yeah. I, I i thought how to how this is like how do i connect everything like for a week i tried to do it by myself <laughs> and i like, invited a friend and right <laughs> it was fun for me yeah of course um but and again that was my dream to be a drummer mm -hmm. but like when i was Around that time, I saw Sound City, the movie okay. of Dave, right, that Dave right. Rowe produced, yeah. directed. And that was my first time seeing a studio and right. seeing, like, hearing people talk about engineering and producing mm -hmm. and all the background, like, right. world. Yeah. And that really, I really loved that because mm -hmm. you see people that you don't know them. Like right. me as a, a young musician, mm -hmm. I don't know who is Butch Wig or right. who is like, right. and I see the pr engineers and the producers that I don't know, and they worked with everybody. Right. And <laughs> like, for me, I I love music, mm -hmm. and I love art, and I love being a drummer, but I really love musician and I love people, right. Right. and. I always n want to s uh, surround myself with musicians because right. musicians are the coolest people on earth. <laughs> they are the coolest and be okay. like musician as like nice. a group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I see this movie and they talk about all the projects that they did and they walk mm -hmm. in with the coolest people right, in the right. world. But you as a like a drummer, you're working just with your band. Right. Like just your, with your friends. Your friend. And, yeah. and <laughs> so I really discovered the whole new world about what is engineer and what is a right. producer. And I and then I I already had like my own studio, like mm -hmm. own equipment, and I started to invite my friends right. to like a jam session, and I, I still have those on on SoundCloud, like right. yeah, my yeah. first mixing okay. and sound <laughs> terrible. Why and do you? Why are they still on SoundCloud? You should take them down. <laughs> no, because, I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> I, I never. I don't delete. I never yeah. delete things because right. for me, and I don't have them on like my computer so that's the only ah, way okay okay and i don't really care yeah it's like all good <laughs> like i really believe that every mix that i'm working on now maybe mm -hmm. i will hate it in a few years next right it's like right you, of course. you never no it's true yeah so i i <laughs> i i i i really want to be whole with the project that mm -hmm. i do right so i and I, I didn't think about them until now, so maybe yeah. I will delete them <laughs> after. Right. They sound terrible. I, like I didn't know to switch phase. Like right. the, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but I I I really enjoyed that period of time because I had my studio and my I grew up in a very love lovely home, mm -hmm. like very loving family and yeah. our home was open for all my friends and right. my parents were very cool and we we can mm -hmm. drink we can smoke do whatever we want yeah. it's like yeah. it's being a teenager and right it, it was like a <laughs> i grew up fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> but like i invite all my friends there mm -hmm. to the studio and we did a lot of like a lot of jams and i recorded right. and then i i when i met a new guy a new musician mm -hmm. i invited them as well and that was my way to get to know new musician because right. I have the studio I can invite people to my house mm -hmm. and th I that was like my my secret weapon how to get to know cool people I have a studio you can right. come to my house and we can get along right, right. and so after like I fell in love with all like the studio stuff mm -hmm. when I I I went to the army like in in Israel, you serve in the army, mm -hmm. and my job was a daily job in Tel Aviv as a sound engineer, like as okay. a uh, sound design for movies. I oh, did a lot of right, post production. Right. Mm -hmm. That was amazing job, and I really liked that. Right. And I got a lot of experience, but like, of doing sound effects and all the mm -hmm. stuff. And so I had the opportunity to to study study something at the evenings because I have right. like I have a daily job and I finish like at five and I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. 
Nice. And I thought if, I didn't know if I want to go study music or sound. Mm-hmm. Because my dream still was to go to maybe Berkeley right. and do all that stuff and mm-hmm. touring around the world as a drummer. Right. And, but I, in high school, that was my major subject was music. And I already okay. started, like I did mm-hmm. uh, a lot of like jazz drumming and I did mm-hmm. uh, all that. Like, uh, right, right. I studied music. Yeah, of course. So, I, and I felt that sound is something that I want to study from people because that's like, it mm-hmm. seems m- it's not just music or art. It's a lot of technical stuff that you actually need to study. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I decided to, that I want to study sound. I went to like a sound engineering school for right. three years. So during my army, I, like I, in the army, I worked on Pro Tools, did some yeah. post-production stuff, and then I studied sound. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, I felt I was a little bit afraid that I'm gonna just put mics on drums and not play the drums. Right. But it's like, then I actually started to do real gigs as a drummer, mm-hmm. sessions and gigs. Yeah. And, and I discovered that for me, playing drums is more personal. Like it was hard for me to mm. play music that I don't connect to or yes. play with people that yes. I don't connect to. Exactly. And and I it was surprising f- surprise for me but I I really like I got okay, let's see what what will happen because mm-hmm. I do believe I I have a lot of trust in in the world. Like right. what's going what need to happen, it will happen. Mm-hmm. It's like and like another standard that I love, it's like what can be taken from you, it's not yours, and what is yours cannot be taken from you. Like, right. yeah. if I need to be a That's drummer, true. I would be a drummer, and if not, we'll yeah, see. Exactly. So when during my studies at the school, like they had a, it was a great school, mm. and we have we had like the. the good studios there mm-hmm. and I was the only one who actually used the studios oh, because you can <laughs> right. all the people who want to like study sound to be an in uh, producers or right. working with yes. like synth synths or mm-hmm. EDM music mm-hmm. and I was re- really with like I we have more people we had more people in, at the stu- at right. school that use the studio but I really used and yeah. here again, I had my uh, my space that I can invite people. Right, right. So now, and I grew up in like north, then from Tel Aviv. Mm-hmm. And when like I moved to Tel Aviv to uh, do the army and the study. Right. And then I have a studio in Tel Aviv and I can invite people, like right. new people that I meet mm-hmm. in Tel Aviv. And then I have another like a uh, secret weapon. I can, let's do right. some session. Right. So that was a great way for me to get to know the industry, industry in Tel Aviv and right, the musician right. in Tel Aviv. Mm. And I always worked. I always record some stuff, mm-hmm. maybe as a drummer or like as a mixer. Like I always yeah. worked on projects. Yeah. And and then I really like, okay, that's what I want to do, and I'm think that I can be good at it because mm-hmm. I like I love people yeah. and I get along yeah. very easily yeah. with musicians and I I'm I actually doing stuff it's like right f- the for me like I really believe that if you want to do something do it yes you don't need <laughs> to wait like you right. can do a lot of stuff right. if, maybe for free or with a mm-hmm. like a shitty equipment or yeah. whatever but you can do you it still it's do not it. yeah. yeah it's very exactly. doable exactly exactly so and then you you worked at a studio in Tel Aviv too right yeah okay. yeah so that was like the after the okay so after i like uh, i finished my service in the mm-hmm. army i still had uh, one year like the last year in, um, in my school mm-hmm. and I like I discover uh, that cool like a uh, cool studio in Tel Aviv. The name's Bardo, mm-hmm. Bardo Studios. I didn't know about the studio, but I saw it like on Facebook or something, and I right. wrote for to Gal Paday, it's like one of the producers there. Mm-hmm. I wrote him that I want to meet him and maybe I can see the studio and whatever. And he asked me, he told me, oh, 
finish with your army and come. Right. We, we will meet. Right. Like day after I got released from the <laughs> army, right. I, I called him and I, I met him. Nice. And, and they told me, yeah, we're looking for new assistant. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, maybe you can come and we'll see. So talk with uh, Jonathan. He's the manager, the staff manager. Mm -hmm. And I met met him. I saw the studio. It was my first time seeing like the SSL board right. and the studio, like a, studio. Like, like a yeah. three rooms. Right. It was amazing. I was so excited because <laughs> I, I, I I worked on uh, like uh, a cool console console on at the the school, but it was right. a different kind. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember yeah, remember the name, exactly. but I saw like SSL. Right. Like <laughs> four thousand. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so I met Jonathan and he asked me a good question that I didn't thought about it deep enough like what do you want to do do you want to be an engineer or a producer mm -hmm. and f for me I, I never like I, I thought or that that's the same like that's right that's the same job but yeah. he told me it's not really the same job like if you want to be here as an intern or assistant you need to like we're looking for people that want to be engineers. Right. And so he told me about like the differences between engineers and producers. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that if you want to do something, you need to know what you're doing. And right. I like even like as a drummer, I if you don't really like the song or you don't really mm -hmm. like the musician or you yeah. don't have you don't have a connection to connection, what you do. Yeah. Like you, you it, as a drummer, you have to find a connection with your heart, like yes. feel to be connected to the music. But mm -hmm. as an engineer or producer or whatever, if you don't like the song, you can you can do like right. you have so many things that you can connect to and mm -hmm. have passion about them that you you still can enjoy the job. Right. And yeah. I really believe that I really love to get deep to stuff mm -hmm. so when he told me we're looking for engineers right. and the meaning of being an engineer is that if you are in the room like they all know like all the people that you're working with mm -hmm. the musician they all know what know what is like 1176 yeah. or they know what is like the, the yeah they have the plugins and they have yeah. everything but you need to know how to use the actually gear and right. you need like you need to be the smartest in the room right <laughs> so like, right. I, I, okay, okay, I was so happy. Okay, I have a lot to learn and mm -hmm. let's do it. I, I, I told him I want to do that. Day after, I talked with the manager, Erez Kaspi, mm -hmm. and like, and we got along. And then, like, immediately, I started to do the intern. It was like they told me three months, you're going to be intern, you're not gonna, going to be paid, and right. that's it do it and it was perfect for me because i got like when you released from the army you get like a uh, some money to start your life oh cool yeah nice so that money i took to pay my rent in tel aviv and right. then for i three months I was, yeah, yeah so i was 24 7 at the studio nice. and it was um, like three months as an intern I learned so much more than three years at my school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was true. amazing, yeah. amazing. And <laughs> I fell in love with the studio culture because it's really right. a culture. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, and so for me, it was amazing. And then I, I like they did the, uh, they test. I had, I need to do like, a, I needed to do this test. Like, okay, now okay. you, or you intern here for three months. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that you can, like, work here, and we know that you can, uh, you know how to set up, uh, mm -hmm. set up mics, microphone, and set up pro session, and you can work here. But right. we want to test you, and I'm very bad in like <laughs> I, I get very uh, nervous. Right. <laughs> and they started to ask me question about like, we had like a a Neve ten sixty six. Okay. And we had like a, a, a sh like they asked me what what is the frequency of the shelf. Really? Uh, yeah, and it was 
the, it because it's so old it it uh, deleted not the like oh that was wrapped off yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't see the frequency <laughs> the acid what is and i i i thought like it it was 15 i think right. and i told them 20 12 or right, whatever right. and they asked me what are the amps of the 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 atc speakers like what they asked right. me a lot of right good question that i really need to know if mm-hmm. i'm the engineer of the session yeah. if like a a client come to what are what amps do you use for the atc is like right. i need to know that stuff mm-hmm. But I was so excited in those three weeks, three months mm-hmm. too, and I didn't thought about the deeper stuff right. and then the I details. really it clicked me like, okay, now I understand what is an engineer It's like right. yeah because I was sh- r- really shocked in those three months because from the the studio coach and how is to be how is to work in mm-hmm. what is the language and how yeah. you talk with people, how you talk with audits, how you talk mm-hmm. with producers, how you can like how you interact with people at right. the studio and in that moment like because i I really know how to to do sessions mm-hmm. there, so they still g- g- give gave me the the gig because right. they accept me and they loved me as a person right. But they told me, "You need to learn this stuff, yeah, and in that moment, I really like I fell in love even more with the the world and like the engineer mm-hmm. stuff because i I discovered that every day in the studio you have like you're always growing yeah in two like two scales I don't know two like, different. Yeah, yeah yeah, you I always you mean. learn a lot of stuff like. like d a converters or a right. like a lot of nerdy stuff <laughs> yes. a lot and I love it, and you always have <laughs> things to learn and new right. technology right and you learn f- with like the f- for more people, and then you learn how like different people use the same equipment, yes. but mm-hmm. you're always growing as a human mm-hmm. because you're always in a delicate situation with people and artists. Right. Right and yeah, and that's and it's interesting you say that because uh, you know a lot of what I like to talk about is that exact relationship, you know how do you how do you work with artists to make them comfortable in the studio, you know so yeah. that's that's such a big part of what engineering is, you know um, so to go off that, I mean, how do you create a comfortable and inspiring en- environment for artists in the studio? It's a good question. Um, it's like i I learned a lot from the the people in the studio mm-hmm. and for me it's it's always like I don't know how it's like here, but in Israel, we get along very easily like yeah. you, we're very open people and very welcoming mm-hmm. so it's always funny for me to see like how we interact and how we talk or whatever um I don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I did a pro too. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always funny for me, like, when you meet new clients and you do the first session with them. Yeah. Sometimes, or the most, the most of the, like, the majority of the, the situation, mm. like, the second session looks so different from the first session because right. at, in the first session, you clicked and you oh, always, like, best friends. Right. So I learned a lot. From the people in the studio, how you meet new clients and how you welcome mm. them and how you can talk with them about e- anything and right. for me, I really when I meet new people i I really love to talk with them about anything else than music yeah that's <laughs> exactly. the best secret yeah talk with them any like right. about anything about like if I don't know you have so many questions that you can ask right. people right. and That's always open a door like for more in- intimate, yeah, uh, and then exactly. you go to the studio and if like you talked before about a movie or something or mm-hmm. then you have another like dot to connect to for right. uh maybe a like a, a reference or yeah. when you when you when you record this take. It sounds like the soundtrack with the movie that we talked about right. or it's like right, be creative right. and yeah. Because I really like people mm-hmm. for me, it's very easy, and when people come to my studio or people studio that I work in, mm-hmm. they see that i'm 
I like them. Like, right. I like people. Right. So if you're a nice person, people will be nice to you. So exactly. exactly. I really believe that. You kind of like break the ice in a sense and just, you know. Yeah. Or you don't really have ice yeah. sometimes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just a sunny day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, in Israel, it's very warm. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I just want to take a quick break and tell you about my free guide, The Art Method, the Advanced Recording Toolkit. In it, I share the details of how you can get pro studio results from your home studio. I've believed for a long time that it's the cook and not the kitchen. If you can learn some of the advanced methods for getting great results in the studio, you can do it in any studio. I skip the basics and dive into the more nuanced info you need to level up the quality of your home studio recordings. Check it out now at brennandecora.com slash art. And now, back to the show. And how do you adapt your techniques for different genres of music? I feel like it's uh, it's not really j- just genres, right. uh, a lot of just different projects. Right. Um, and the equipment that you have and mm. what... And what is the mindset of the the artist? Because a lot of some of the artists that are working, I know that they don't have patience. Yes. Or they have a lot of patience and they want to test everything. Right. <laughs> and for me, I like I really adapt for every project. Like mm-hmm. I do whatever I can to to be like watering their. Yeah. Like be fluid with it. Yeah, yeah because mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm. I'm young enough, and I really feel like I can. I, every project that I do, I really want to study from it, and I really mm. want to be a part of it. So, and I don't have. I have my own stuff that I, I usually do, right. and like mic, te- mic te- yeah, technique and stuff. Course. But it's every. It's about. It actually, it's always about the person that you're working with because I really, mm-hmm. like, I now I'm just finishing working on this uh, album that we've worked on it for two years now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's with an amazing guitar player. Uh, his name is Dan Atal. Okay. And he's like, it's a huge project, like instrumental stuff. Right. And we did everything. Mm-hmm. Like, we checked everything. We checked the API, and the knee right. and we checked this amp and this guitar and mm-hmm. we checked this cable it's we checked everything right. <laughs> so with him it was so different with people that don't have the patient and they don't really care yeah. and so i do whatever i want right but i do always want want to check new things mm-hmm. and but i have to say like something that i think about right now a lot of the artists have like uh, they think what they want to do and they searching for mic t- micing technique or right. so they asking me ah oh, let's do this and let's do that and right. I want to use this microphone because mm-hmm. sometimes it's not really working and I know it's gonna sound ma- a bit off or right. but sometimes I use it because in the, it's not really matters yeah it, because if they're happy about it and they think exactly. it sounds great they're gonna do That's a great take yeah yeah, exactly. No, yeah. I've I've found that a number of times where, you know, artists will ask for something that's like, I wouldn't do it that way, but let's try it, you know, yeah. no problem. And, you know, like you said, they're happy, so they get a great performance, and that's, at the end of the day, that's all that matters, yeah. you know. So, it's And sometimes it do sounds great. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and... And you, and you learn something in the process, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and it's happened for me, like, a lot... On, in the da, like mm-hmm. when I work with people who also produce their own music, right. yeah. Like I, I do, I work a lot with new artists. Okay, like that's what I really enjoy to do. Mm-hmm. And when they like write a drum, pr- like they program drums. Mm-hmm. Even me as a drummer, I I hear them their take and it sounds like weird. Yeah, it sounds like this drummer has like a three, yes, r- three hands <laughs> exactly. A- and but. It's that I n- I would never think about it like that, right. and that's the reason that it sounds good or yeah. like Unique. weird. But yeah. I would never do that, and mm-hmm. sometimes I'm very happy about this situation. Sometimes it's hard because 
right it's it's not it shouldn't be like that yeah and it <laughs> doesn't sound right and you do yeah. like a indie song or a mm-hmm. like classic rock song and you you know you hear that it's not it's not a right. drum like right, it's a right. guitar player who wrote drums yeah <laughs> but sometimes it's very surprising yeah thing. and it still works you know whatever works for the song is is works you yeah know? it's all good so yeah um and how do you deal with unexpected technical issues during a session every session that i'm go i'm like every start the, the starting of a session mm-hmm. i know it we're gonna have some problem of yeah. it. it's like every session you have a problem there's always something yeah. so Th- that being y- just you being used to problems right i never get like nervous and i think the one of the most like important thing that i learn as an assisting engineer or mm-hmm. a uh, intern or right. engineer at the studio mm-hmm. at bauda studios it's how to react to problems because right okay We have this problem now we need to solve it mm. we i i need to be the one who is controlling stuff even if i don't know how what i'm gonna do right. i need to be re- relaxed and i'm a very relaxed person yeah in my nature mm-hmm. so i never get nervous and i always actually i don't know but things if you if the clients see you that you're not nervous Right. that will be okay and if yeah. it's gonna take time it's gonna take time if it's about money like if it's my studio mm-hmm. and it's my responsibility like I don't think a lot about money on and stuff and right, if right. it's a studio it's like I remember one of like the when I was intern I had like a big session with a big pianist in Israel mm-hmm. and I I like I I did the setup and I I didn't turn on the AC when the okay. the the piano guy who the one who oh, the tuner, tuner, yeah, the tuner yeah. came uh-huh. and in the middle of the middle of the day the it was no before the session it it got hotter and I turned on the AC mm-hmm. and then the piano go out of tune oh, and I was so naive and I didn't think about it right. and and the client like was very angry about that and right so but i told him yeah i turned on the ac i'm sorry right and <laughs> do you want to be hot in here like yeah <laughs> we're like five people in the room right. <laughs> sorry i didn't think about it and i'm ha- like the engineer really like got my back and the manager got my back and yeah yeah we didn't told you that stuff and so like right. i was nice and I mm. like I I gave him some food or, or coffee and it was yeah. nice and we, we, I called the the guy who tuned the piano uh-huh. I called him again he, he was nice and in the end of the day it was uh it was okay and right. we didn't charge him for another two hours until the right right but that was one of like my my scariest mm. moment yeah then I okay I Breathe, yeah. be nice. I mean, it's all about your attitude about it, you know, yeah. first and foremost, for sure, for sure. And I re- just remember about, like, one conversation that I had, like, after the test that I did, like, mm-hmm. when I just started to be the assistant of the studio. Right. I I talked with, like, a staff engineer, a good friend of mine, and I told him, yeah, like, I didn't, I was so nervous at the, this test mm-hmm. exam, but... I feel like I really know how to do my job i I know right. how to connect things I know how to do setups and he told me you don't really you like maybe you know how to um work with the gear, but right you didn't see enough um problems you didn't like right. and do even in my last session at the studio sadly we closed the studio a year ago okay, okay. yeah. And even at my last session, mm-hmm. I'm the engineer, I'm working with my friends, I'm right. like amazing session. Even in the last session, I, we had like a little problem that that mm-hmm. was my first time seeing this problem. Right. I don't remember if it was the Pro Tools or the, mm-hmm. I don't know, but I, I remember it and I laugh, I laugh about it. And yeah, even I think even at my last session, session in my life right. i would see like a new problem yep. and i need to solve it <laughs> exactly and it's always seeing more yep. problem and yep. discover new things because 
you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah there's so many so many parts to the puzzle that, yeah. you know, there's always something that's going to yeah. happen for sure. I'm very used sure. to solve problems. Right. <laughs> um, and what's the most rewarding aspect of being an engineer? The, like, the first thing that pops in my mind, it's going to, like, the concert of, like, okay. maybe releasing yeah. a concert yeah. album. Mm-hmm. And seeing the, it's a good one because I really believe that you need to be friends with the people that you work. Yeah. And I have to say that I'm very, I'm hunting my the project that I'm working on. Okay. Because I like it's, and it started from the beginning because I know that I'm, I'm always giving 100% of mine. Like mm-hmm. I'm working very hard on the project. Right. And I love music, and it's important for me to work on a good music. So mm-hmm. if I hear like or seeing a new musician or a good musician or someone that I really enjoyed his mm-hmm. music and I like him, his personality or whatever, I want to work with him. Right. And the best way to work with him is to be his friend. Right. And I know it sounds like weird because I want to be his friend to work with yeah. but it's always, <laughs> yeah. always, always works very natural yeah. because if, you, if you're not friends, so you don't want to work with him. Right, and of course. If, so it's like, the end of the day, the majority of the product that I do, I actually work with my friends. Mm-hmm. Or that I, we were friends and then we start working together or we right. start working together and then we... We became, we became very yeah, yeah. good friends, but we work okay, okay with the guitarist that mm-hmm. I told you. So I worked with him. Like we wor- we we spend like hundreds of hours working together, just right. me and him, editing some stuff, recording some stuff, mm-hmm. just me and him. And when you get very close to a person, you right. forget about all the like his image. Yeah. But then, and I, I say about, not, not just about this guy, like mm-hmm. every artist that I'm working with, they're like very talented people. But when I work with him, I forget about this and we're just good right. friends or right. whatever. And then you see them on stage yeah. and you discover, I, f- I forgot this. It's like, <laughs> wow, he's so talented. And the crowd is right. <laughs> like, he's the God now. Like, yeah. And I, he's my friend. It's like very re- rewarding because... Yeah. I know him. I know mm. his his music. I know that, like, I know every note of the, this album. Right. I work on that, and I see all the crowd. It right. was like I felt like seeing the sound sound city movie because mm-hmm. talking with people, they know the artists, and the artists are the gods. But right. I, it's like my friend, and exactly. for me, it's exactly. it's always <laughs> so so yeah. funny to 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 remember these Absolutely. things. Absolutely, no, that's that's a really important point for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, and what's your approach to working with artists who have very specific uh, vision of the project? So, again, people, who, if they have like a specific thing that they want to do, mm-hmm. I will do everything that they want to do. Yeah. I'm very open. I'm very open. I did right. a lot of crazy stuff. And I'm always open to trying new, new things. Mm-hmm. And... I really love because I, I like I always discover like an, I always need to remind myself that it's not about the like the music or the experience that I have. It's mm-hmm. really about the person that you're working with, and even like it's not really matter how much experience do you have as a mixer when mm-hmm. you're working with new artists. You need to learn his his language like right. when he's right. saying yeah i want it more creamy sound mm-hmm. what the hell is creamy sound <laughs> exactly. like oh, punchy like yeah. for me sometimes neve sounds punchier than api yeah it's like and it depends yeah it's like sometimes so just the language for mm-hmm. me i really f- for the first time i really want to like talk with them about music right. and I, sometimes I don't tell them about that, but I'm asking them questions like, or yeah, I tell them, yeah, it sounds really punchy. Like I love the chords, but mm. it's like really big. And then I started to understand their language right. and how right. they describe music. Yeah. And then I really understand, okay, they, wanted, they want to, that. And, mm-hmm. 
and I really remember that they taught us uh, in the school, like, mm -hmm. as an engineer, you need to know what is, how purple sound. I want right. I want to sound purple, like. Right. <laughs> I don't. Right. <laughs> so I'm very happy that I, like, working with new clients that they have a specific mm -hmm. thing that they want to approach to because for me it's a great way because they're the artist. Yeah. I do whatever they want to do. Yeah. And I'm for sure. I'm I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> um so I like to wrap up each podcast with the same few questions. Uh the first one is who is your most influential teacher? Like the first th the first guy who popped in my mind is it's it Jonathan Danino. Okay. Uh, he was uh, he was the staff manager at Baldo. Right. And I I worked with him a lot, and he has approach like he's very real. Right. So he taught me a lot of things how to how to solve problems and mm. how to approach problems and. He was the one who masters all my first mixes, so he really mastered my mix right. in my session. Right. So right. that's the best way to learn mixing because mm -hmm. he solving problems in your mix and yeah, I push like seven dB. Yeah, he put, you need just three dB maybe right. or right. it was so for me it was so I I I loved working with him because. I studied a lot, mm -hmm. just like seeing him talking with new clients and right. become their friends and yeah. then do like the very like amazing work like that on, on solving problem that I tried to solve right. and <laughs> now he really solved yeah. them. <laughs> but right. I learned a lot from all the staff, like Erez mm -hmm. Kaspi, the manager, I learned so much from him. And nice. I have to say, I when we worked together, mm -hmm. I, he was the manager, so we had like a. I, I, I was afraid to ask them, ask him questions, right? Because right. he was the man. But then after we closed the studio, we had like a. We had like a two weeks that we closed the studio, and okay. we turned down the 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 board, the SSL. Right, right. We took every model mm -hmm. and we yeah. we shipped it, and it was like amazing experience, and we got very close in these two mm -hmm. weeks closing the studio and right. I learned so much from him and he told me all about the history of the studio and then we continue to work together nice. after but in this studio I I worked with the best artists and musicians and engineers mm -hmm. like that was the heart of the industry the music industry right. in Israel right. so I really I got to learn like I really learned a lot from each person, everyone. I worked yeah. with so many engineers and I learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's hard for me to of say course. what no, one it's name. Always, it's always difficult for sure. For yeah. Sure. Um, the next question is, what is your favorite reference track? If you have to go to a new studio, learn their room, yeah. how it sounds, what do you put on? Um, so... It really depends on in the genres, genre yeah, because I, I, when I go to new studios, it's mostly for recording, mm -hmm. and because I don't really mix in the. And when I yeah. I do I record, it depends the studio if they have a good equipment or not. Right. I do like record like something will sound close to my mix if mm -hmm. I do the mix. So usually, and usually I have my external SSD, so right. I, I just open like a, a mix that I'm working right, on right. and hearing the new, new yeah, music or familiar. put a reference track, like mm -hmm. asking them, hey, what do you like to the, what did you heard last, last right, week or right. what did, what do you heard this morning on? And yeah. I just ask that and because you are with the musician mm -hmm. in the room always, because the, so right. I put something that they like. Yeah. And they ha they enjoy it, and then I can hear the room. Exactly. But I always have my headphones, and I, mm -hmm. if I do like specific EQ, I right, always right. do it with my headphones, and nice. that's my way. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, last question: What would be one tidbit uh, for an upcoming engineer? I feel like I'm an upcoming engineer. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I have, I have, I have a few because. I 
I still have like I, I have a lot of friends who try and mm-hmm. or want to be engineers. Right. And I see what the things that I do and they're not, or, mm-hmm. or what the things they do and I, I'm not. Right. And I learn a lot from that. And I have to say, the first thing, don't be lazy. <laughs> because <laughs> you're working on some stuff and you have an idea. Maybe it can do like a good thing. Or mm-hmm. you have this thought, you have to do that. Like, right. don't be lazy because... Give always your hundred hundred percent of your mm-hmm. like your mind. Do that, right? And surround yourself with people that you're proud to be surrounded by. Like right. surround yourself with people that you really enjoy, mm-hmm. and like you really want to um, to to learn from them and right, right. maybe to teach them things. Like mm-hmm. surround with people that you feel like. They need you as much as you need them. Right. And the last thing is every project that you're working on, feel a part of the project. Yeah. And it's the most, like, that's very important because even me as the engineer or the producer or the mixer, Mm. I always feel a part of the team. So if they have a concert, I, I, f- I take a picture of the concert. Or if they're right. in the studio, I do some stories and take some pictures mm. and, and taking like a good video of them, right. even when they don't notice that. Then I show them and they, everyone happy that someone took a good picture of him right, or right. good videos. And yeah. then I can post and don't <laughs> like they. Yeah, he went, the engineer post me with the SSL. It seems like good yeah. for me. Like mm-hmm. be a part of their journey. Right. And make them feel like you are part of the journey, and uh, and another thing, mm-hmm. work as much as you can because, for me, the one that I want to gain the most is confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you con- consistently do sessions, and do mixing and work w- right. with people, you gain your confidence. And yeah. I worked a lot in f- for free, and I, in the last years, I. I gain a lot of my, my confidence from just mm-hmm. those sessions. Yeah, and absolutely. absolutely. Don't be lazy yeah. and just do <laughs> things. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. here. I really well, appreciate that, it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for joining in today on Pro Audio Profiles. Make sure to hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week.